week after week, month after month, year after year, for nearly four years now, we have gathered in this room, in this sanctuary, by the ocean side, to read, to interpret, to search for glimpses, openings, hints, shall we say, from the ancient words of the Holy Scriptures. For thousands of years before us, many generations, many people groups in vastly different regions of this globe have taken these very same ancient words and discovered that they are absolute and yet ever evolving. That these words are comforting and yet challenging. That these words are peaceful and yet without justice there can be no peace. These ancient words have altered the lens by which we see ourselves, our neighbor, creation, the divine. And so on this Reformation Sunday, we wear, we wear red, and, and it is after all to acknowledge the reforming work of Martin Luther, the German Catholic priest and reformer. Certainly, from my reading and my scholarship on Luther, I have concluded that his primary perception of the scriptures, his primary understanding of the word, the is, is to shape graceful identity. It is to say that Luther views the Holy Scriptures as a story of grace that is continuously shaping the human identity. Did you hear? The spirit behind Luther's red redefinition, shall we say, of the Catholic Church's practice of its, of its authority derived from this baptismal assurance. There was no longer a need for an ordained priest to stand in between the divine and the people. For the common people of God, the priesthood of all believers were inherently already priests. With direct access to the Creator and faith made it all possible. It is fascinating to me to consider that these renewing words, that there is power in these renewing holy ancient words that have read so many of us, so many generations before us, to new things. Because grateful identity and the reshaping of identity is innately associated with newness. One cannot be gratefully shaped. And somehow we made the same. This is the premise of today's wisdom. From the Hebrew narrative in Jeremiah to John's gospel, there is a narrative of graceful identity shaping into unions. It informs humanity of who they are and who they ought to become. Jeremiah prophesied the days are surely coming. Did you hear that? When I will make a new covenant, says the Lord. The days are surely coming. Such prophetic words that point us to a future of reformation of the ancient Hebrew covenant made by the Creator. So no longer would God's commandments be written on the covenant. From now on, they will be naturally implanted inside within the deepest sense of being human. But there is more to say here. Because John's Gospel outlines a very interesting conversation between Jesus and a group of Jews who believed in Jesus. But there was a fundamental, a fundamental disconnection between believing and abiding. They somehow relied on their familial lineage, on the covenant that God made with their ancestor Abraham. But listen to this, they were nothing like Abraham. 
they did not have the spiritual identity of Abraham, despite the fact that they were descendants of Abraham. Does that sound like anything in our world today? And I wonder how many in our world believe in God today, but do not abide in God at all. How many call themselves Christians, but are nothing like Christ? How many are in need of grace or identity shaping? How many need their, these ancient words to somehow come and reshape them, reform them? Because those who believe in the Jesus way must abide in the Jesus way. One cannot be shaped and still remain in the same. Let's suppose that this third message speaks to our current time. During a season of life where we hear misinformation, false political messaging, conspiracy theories, they abound, oh, they abound. And it is getting harder and harder to discover the truth in this world. What is needed is not merely people who believe in God, but people who abide in God. Those who carry deeply within him the graceful identity of Jesus, those who authentically resemble Jesus, those who are truly imitating Jesus in this world. Where are those who closely relate to Jesus? What does it look like to resemble the graceful identity of Jesus today? This is much I do know, but I'm reminded of the story of Jesus. I think of my ancestors. I think of my great grandmother, Mama Benjamin, four feet tall, five feet, a perfect in her own way. I think of my grandmother, Mama Nanita, who had a beautiful singing voice and such gentleness and had such fervor in her prayer life. I think of my mother and my father, who have been pastors for over 50 years, involved in all kinds of movements in the church, from a Roman Catholic to a Pentecostal to who they are today. And I think of the many saints that have come before us. And how they have spoken into who Jesus is. Jesus left his glory to come to this earth to be born into chaos, into a refugee story. His mother and his father moving about in unfamiliar land. Born in the day of the heavens, child grows up to be 12 years old, goes into the temple, and is preaching with such wisdom and knowledge, and his parents are terrified because they have lost Jesus. And they find him in the synagogue speaking. And then we see Jesus baptized, and a moment after his baptism, he goes out into this world to perform, to do his ministry in service for the world, he begins to heal the, 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 the broken, he begins to feed the hungry, he begins to care for the poor, he begins to care for the needy, he begins to speak up for there is injustice, he becomes his voice for the voiceless. And then he is crucified on a cross. Days later, comes back to life. But all of his greatest love of his life, it's, it's, it comes from his bedrock of love, of compassion, and of justice. I wonder, do our lives in any way reflect that story? Can we confidently say this morning that we have a life? that mimics the Jesus identity. 
we are still being redefined and reshaped into our spiritual identity in the divine. Thanks be to God. We have access to the divine by faith. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to God for the grace we receive, for the future that is here and yet fully to come, for being part of a universe that is being made new, repaired, and restored, and that we get to be part of a flow that is seemingly reconciling the entire world. Thanks be to God for His ancient words that continue to alter our view of self, of labor, of all creation, and everything. Thank you.